Hi, thanks for tuning in. Welcome back. My name is Pastor Rita Gant and my husband, Pastor Tori and I, we welcome you to today's teaching and we're excited about what God is going to do today. Amen. Let's go ahead and pray. Father God, we just love you. We thank you, Lord, for your presence here with us. Lord God, we hope and pray and believe that we will hear from you and be changed by the power of your love and the power of your word in Jesus name. Amen. Okay. Well, today's message is titled Earth, Wind, and Fire. And my byline here is hearing from God. So we're going to talk a little bit of today about hearing from God. And so if you're looking for God to show you what is going on or what to do or the direction that he's trying to take you in, he can uh, use several different signs or you can just to show you or you can just listen for his still small voice. And so we're going to talk about that today. 1 Kings 10, 11, and 12, I have it here in the NIV. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore through the mountains apart, tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper or a still small voice, some translations say. So let me just kind of set the stage here, what has ha happened. Elijah, the prophet of God, had just gone through a tremendous victory. Like there were 450 prophets of a false god named Baal who were working for Ahab, who was the king, and uh, his queen was uh, Jezebel. And um, what happened was it there had been a drought for a really long time. There was no rain. And so... Um, God had told Elijah to go and to challenge the false gods or the false god. And so what happened was they yelled at the God and even cut themselves and, you know, asked the God to come and show himself real and nothing happened. But then Elijah went and laid everything out for, the, for a burnt offering. And he even used water, which was, you know, remember they were in a drought, to pour on the altar and all over the sacrifice and in the trenches and everywhere. He used water to just make everything wet. And then he called upon the name of the Lord and fire immediately came and burned up not only the offering, but even the rocks that the offering were on. So um, God really showed himself real. Well, right after that, Jezebel, which was the evil queen, had uh, put a hit out on his life and said that she was going to kill him. And so Elijah took off running and he went and he, um, he went and he hid. And so that's the scene of what's going on. After a great victory, Elijah was marked for death by the reigning evil queen Jezebel and he took off running. After Elijah got to a safe place and God took care of his physical needs because he was exhausted, God instructed him to stand on the mountain in his presence. Then the Lord sent a mighty wind, which broke the rocks in pieces, and he sent an earthquake and a fire, but his voice was in none of them. And after all of that, the Lord spoke to Elijah in a still, small voice or a gentle whisper. And so the point of God speaking in this still, small voice was to show Elijah that the work of God didn't always need to be accompanied by a dramatic revelation or a manifestation of, or, of signs and wonders. Because remember, that's what he had just dealt with. He had just dealt with God, you know, revealing himself in this big, huge way. But God wanted to share to Elijah that he could talk to him in the smallest of ways. And that's significant. We're going to get to why in just a moment. So a lack of a grand manifestation does not necessarily mean divine inactivity. What I mean by that is just because you don't see something big happening doesn't mean that God is not working. God is always moving on your behalf. Remember Romans 8, 8 28. He's working for your good. And also, at this time in, in Elijah's life, he really needed the tenderness that God was displaying to him at that moment. See, God knows what you need when you need it. And God knows how to speak to you in a way that you can hear and understand. Oftentimes, God will speak to you through just a knowing in your inner being. Just like you know which direction to go or just, you know... You, you, you feel confident that God is leading you in that direction. And this is due to the presence of the Holy Spirit who lives on the inside of you. Zechariah 4, 6 in the ESV says, Then he said to me, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. And this scripture tells us that God's work is not by might or by power, but by his spirit, meaning that dramatic displays of power or intense signs and wonders 
are not necessary for God to work. And I think it's important for us to note that because a lot of times people will go from one meeting to the next to the next. There was this whole huge wave of the uh, of, of people thinking that the only way God was moving was through the supernatural. Well, God is always moving and God is always speaking and God is always telling us what direction to move in. Uh, we just need to learn to cultivate um, a an atmosphere to hear him. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute too. I, I recently told uh, a couple of my kids this story. Um, whenever Pastor Tori and I, we were uh, just really good friends for several months after we met and hung out a lot, did a lot of ministry stuff together. And, um, you know, when we got down to it, we decided, we, 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 we looked at each other one day and said, oh my gosh, you know, I, I, I think of you as more than a friend. And so we fasted and we prayed and we Ask the Lord what to do. But uh, one time we were in the grocery store, Pastor Tori and I, Tori at that time. Uh, and uh, there were some like green bananas. They were really, really green. And so I said, Lord, let him say there's these bananas are so green. Well, he never said that. And come to find out later on that he's allergic to bananas. So he wouldn't even be looking at the bananas. So my fleece to God or my uh, test to God wasn't even uh, valid. And so my point is, is that, let me just read this. I was trying to get God to show me a sign, but he just spoke to my heart instead. And through a course of, of time and me just getting close to God and, and fasting and praying, God just put a knowing in my heart that uh, this love that I had for this man uh, was a good thing and that I was I was safe in that good thing. Um, so God cares about your situation. And if you ask him, he will make sure that you can hear him. But he doesn't have to use a sign and a wonder in order for that to happen. As a matter of fact, if we are only looking for signs and wonders, we're going to get confused and off track because the enemy likes to counterfeit signs and wonders. So you have to be really confident uh, about hearing from the Lord whenever you're just relying on those kind of things. Uh, I don't I don't recommend that. John 10, 27 and 28 in the Amplified says, The sheep that are my own hear my voice and listen to me. I know them and they follow me. And I give them eternal life and they will never ever by any means perish and no one will ever snatch them out of my hand. So God is not only able to make sure that you can hear his voice and that you can follow after him by hearing that voice, but that you cannot be snatched out of his hand or taken away from him. I think that's important to know. Knowing God and trusting his guidance comes from listening when he is telling you to do small things daily. Now, this is one training ground I really want to talk to you about. You get into the practice of hearing God when he nudges you to do the right thing. God will nudge you and show you and guide you by his Holy Spirit who lives on the inside of you towards the right action. And he does that. He trains you in this area by nudging you toward doing right things. Um, you get into the practice of hearing him when he nudges you toward doing right things. Don't ignore this training ground. Operating in integrity and excellence is one way that God trains us to hear his still small voice. When we obey his seemingly small, insignificant directions, God will advance us to something greater. Many times people think that the small leadings are no big deal and that they can just ignore them. But the truth is, if you won't obey God in the small things, you won't ever get the chance or to, uh, to advance in obeying him in the bigger things. So it's important for you to obey him in the small things. Like if he's telling you, hey, you know, don't, don't act like that or don't talk like that or, hey, just be patient. Or if he's telling you these little things and by the Holy Spirit, he's prompting you and nudging you to do things right. And you just ignore it because you don't want to, or you think oh, it's not a big deal. I can do how, whatever I want, however I want. Well, absolutely true. You can do that, but it's not going to turn out the best for you because you're, if you don't follow the nudging and the leading of the Holy Spirit, then you're missing opportunity for growth and you're missing opportunity for growth in listening and hearing and obeying so that you can be faithful in those little things and God will advance you to hear about bigger things. A lot of time during this training ground, God is correcting small flaws in our character. This is so important. If we don't allow this correction and we don't choose to fix the little things, then what we are creating is a larger problem that we'll have to deal with later. It's so true. If you don't let God correct you in pride, if you don't let God correct you in 
uh, just a nasty attitude, if you don't cor let him correct you in these little areas, then that's just those those bad things are just going to grow and grow and grow in your character and in your personality to where they become a huge problem later on and could actually become a roadblock or a, a stumbling block in, in your relationships. So if we don't allow this correction and we don't choose to fix the little things now, then we are just creating a larger problem that we will have to deal with later. If it's important enough for God to mention it, then, you know, it's important enough for you to obey it. And if God is leading you, that's him mentioning it. He is changing you from being mediocre to being excellent or to moving in excellence. And that's really what you want. You really want to grow. You really want to become better and, uh, you know, get out of that just mediocre life. Amen. And God will lead you out of there. God is trying to prepare you for your future, but if you don't take the time right now to listen, honor, and obey him in the little things, then you will miss out on the best future that he has for you. What God has planned for you will not always, and this is a side note, what God has planned for you will not always be what everything everyone else thinks it should be. What God has planned for you will not always be what everyone thinks that you should do, and it is often outside the norm of that. So I have a, a whole story, if I have time, I'll get into about that. But keep in mind that what God has for you is for you to know, not for everyone else to know. It's not for everyone else to know. Going back to the whole thing with Pastor Tori, um, you know, whenever I was praying about marrying him, um, we had some opposition. People didn't think that it was a good idea because uh, one one minister that came to our church actually said that, you know, the Bible says not to mingle your flocks. And we're like, what? And he was talking about interracial couples. Man, this was 30 plus years ago. So uh, that was kind of crazy. But, um, you know, not everybody's going to understand what God has called you to do or w the direction that God has is leading you in. Just You just got to know in your knower, right here in your, in your inner being, that he is leading you and guiding you. And the way that you do that is to Follow his commands in the little things. So when the big things come up, you're you're comfortable in that knowledge of who he is in you and how he's leading you. Trust that God has the best in store for you and take one day at a time. I heard a song say once, just keep doing the next right thing. And I think that's good advice. You just take it day by day and keep doing the next, keep doing the next right thing. So here are some small things that God might ask you to do. Before I get into those things, I want to say this. Uh, Miss, uh, Miss Devon and I, uh, we talk a lot and I send her my notes and, and she mentioned something that I do want to mention um, is that, you know, there are three voices that you may be hearing. There's God's voice, your voice, and the enemy's voice. And it's really easy to know the difference if you know the character of God, Okay. First of all, the enemy is not going to be leading you down a righteous path. He's going to try to put confusion in there. The Bible says that he is the author of confusion and he is going to try to confuse you. So, and if there, if he's asking you to do anything that lacks integrity, that is not God's voice, period. Okay. Um, now the other, the other voices, yours and the Lord's, uh, make sure that what you're listening to is positive and go to the word just go to the word go to the word go to the word and a lot of times you'll find your answer in the word of god amen but we're gonna keep going here here are some small things that god might ask you to do now listen this is the training ground and i even heard joyce meyer say something about this once um little things when god asks you to do little things and you do them then you're advancing into hearing him ask you to do bigger things or show you to do bigger things. Some little things that he might ask you to do, and I've taught on this before, is return shopping carts back to the place that they should go, return food or items that you decide not to buy back to the right place in the store, hang up clothes in the store that you didn't knock down. These are simple little things, but they're, they're training. It's training ground. It's a training ground for you to hear God's voice, hear him nudging you to do what's right, and then you do it, okay? If you realize, uh, oh, take a pen back. A long time ago, when I was learning all of this from the Lord, um, like we used to write checks at the grocery store. <laughs> yeah, that was a while back. 
and you know you would borrow the pen and you would write your check and then you know if you got out to the car and you realized you took the pen accidentally it's in your purse it's in your hands in your pocket whatever take the pen back and give it back take the and make the effort to return it so i know that we don't write checks anymore but that is just an example like if you find something like that make the effort to go back and fix it if you realize something wasn't paid for on your receipt, go back and pay for it. We realized once when we were doing some shopping, I think it was like at Burlington, Pastor Tori and I, well, so long ago, um, over in East Austin, we uh, got out to the car with the shopping bag or shopping basket and we unloaded our things. And in the bottom was a belt that Pastor Tori had considered purchasing. And, um, you know, we had a choice. Of course, we didn't think about it at all. We we did the right thing. But we could have just like said, hey, free belt. Threw it in the car and took off. But no, we both looked at each other like, oh my gosh, let's get back in there and pay for that. And so we did, you know, we, we took, went straight back in there and paid for it. Um, whenever the kids were really little and I would I'd treat them and let them get a donut in H-E-B while we were shopping, I would always make sure that I got the little bag and if I had a little marker in my purse or whatever, I would just tie a knot in the bag if I didn't have anything to write on it with. And I would make sure that I uh, paid for that when we went to check out. There was a time or two when I had forgotten it and got lost in the fray and the bag got, you know, maybe fell out of the cart or whatever. And then so the next time I went, I said, okay, and charge me for, you know, two donuts or whatever. So just be a person of excellence. And, you know, if you find that you've made a mistake, be willing to fix it Be and, and take the initiative to do so. It's not a blessing from God. It's a test of your integrity. A lot of times people will say, oh, hey, free belt, blessing from God. No, that's a, a test of your integrity. What are you going to do about it? Amen. Okay. And then there's another thing that, um, that God might ask you to do that would help you grow after you obey is to do something nice for someone knowing that you will not ever get the credit. And only God is going to be the only one that would ever see what you did. Okay? These little things. And then there's so many more God will, you know, ask you to do. Um, like I said, those are just some small ways that God is training you to hear from Him and obey Him. Hear from Him and obey Him. And once you get through that little training ground, you know, and it, and it, it comes back around. Like just the other day I had an opportunity. Somebody, I put a couple of things up on the counter and the lady said, oh, that's a dollar seven. I said, that's not right. And she goes, oh, yeah, it is. And I said, no, ma'am, there's two items here. And she goes, oh, I thought that was your whatever. And I said, no, ma'am, I'm buying both of these things. And she's like, oh, okay, well, it'll be. And then she charged me the right amount. But, you know, there is that little moment when all of a sudden you're like, oh, what do I do? Well, you know, if you practice doing right, then you're going to always do the right thing. So make it a practice to do what's right and do it because it's right and do it right. All right. Okay. So those are just some small ways that God is training you to hear him and to obey him. Childlike obedience may seem silly. You'll listen, but it bonds you together with God in a way that is life changing. When you hear from God, when you know that God is leading you in a certain way, and if you're willing to do small, simple things, simply because you believe he's leading you in that direction, it draws you to God in a significant, a significant way, and it establishes a connection of surrender to him. A, a, a connection of surrender, like you're yielding to God and you're saying, yes, Lord. If you make it a habit to yield to the Lord, to surrender to the Lord, and to follow the Lord, then you're going to grow and you're going to grow and you're going to grow in hearing from the Lord so that you'll be prepared when big things come. You'll be able to hear readily, easily, quickly, and securely um, to go in the right direction. So God uses small acts of obedience as a way of learning or a training ground to hear from him. When we follow through in these small things, we advance to hearing from him about larger things. And because we have trusted that we heard him in those small things, then we will trust that we can hear him enough when it comes time to hear for the big things. That's the plan. Amen. That's the plan. God starts you off small. So, you know, even if you don't hear, I heard Gloria uh, Copeland say one time that uh, the first time she heard from God, the Lord told her, your light is on in your car. Go turn it off. And she's like, why would God talk to me about that? And she's like, well, 
I better just go see because, you know, even if I miss it, it's just a small thing and God knows that. So she went out there and sure enough, the light was on in her car. And that was back in the day when lights didn't automatically go off. So guess what? Uh, 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 she had young children. She was a mom at home and, you know, Kent was off working. And so God cared about her not having a, a rundown battery. And he just spoke to her and just clearly in her spirit and said, you know what? I think you left. And sometimes we even think when God's talking to us, we think it's just ourselves. You know, oh, I had that thought or I had that idea. A lot of times God will speak to us in thoughts and ideas and nudge us in certain ways and give us like witty inventions or ideas and, and things. So, uh, you know, it's not like it's not rocket science. God wants to train you and he wants to help you and he wants to grow you. Uh, but you can rest assured that he's big enough to help you, even if you make a mistake, even if you say, oh, I thought that was God. But be willing to go back and say, you know what? I thought that was God and it kind of wasn't. And that's OK, you know, because God is, is big enough to get you through that. OK, so if we hear and obey in the small, we will trust that we can hear enough to obey in the big. That's the plan. Because he is God, he is not confined to a single manner of communicating with his people. So just like in the Bible, how he spoke to Elijah in that still small voice, there's many places in the Bible where he spoke in the thunder and he spoke in the lightning and he spoke in, you know, there's other places in the Bible that he had a big splash. But the bottom line is, is that God is God and he can speak to you any way that he wants to. The truth of the matter, though, is that if we're looking for, always looking for signs and wonders, we could get off course because God doesn't always talk in signs and wonders. As I found out with the green bananas, God just spoke to my heart and gave me peace and reassurance that I was walking in the right direction. So he can use anything to talk to us. In the Bible, he even used a donkey once. So if you're not familiar with that story, you should go look it up. It's true. It's in there. And it's pretty funny. But God will most often speak to you through his word. Amen through the word of God. He instructs us and he guides us and he points us in the right direction with his word so often. Hebrews 1, 1 through 2 in the ESV says, Long ago at many times and in many ways God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. So back before Jesus came, God spoke a lot through prophets, and he still does use prophets today. But because Jesus came and the Holy Spirit came, we have a direct link to God. So we don't have to go through other people. We can hear God clearly for ourselves. John 1, 1 in the Amplified, in the beginning before all time was the Word, which was Christ, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God himself. So the Word of God is actually Christ himself. Amen. So God speaks to us through Christ by the word and through the Holy Spirit that he has sent us to dwell on the inside of us. And God can also speak differently to different personality types in different ways. For example, Pastor Tori and I, we have different ways that we hear from the Lord. Um, we both, uh, you know, like to worship and we both hear from the Lord that way. But PT and I, like, if he's getting a message, he can do it through all kinds of noise. If I'm getting a message from the Lord, I have to, like, get myself in a quiet place and just chill and press in and pray. Um, but anyways, PT and I are very different in this way. I like to get really quiet and still and have no noise to hear from God, especially for the messages. But PT has a different personality. He has nurtured a way to hear God through all kinds of noise. <laughs> He can have the TV going with sports on, be mowing the yard, running, working out, um, and he will still clearly hear from God, you know, whatever God is telling him to write down, whatever God is telling him. And uh, and he, because he has practiced hearing from God through all this noise or this chaos, in my in my opinion, <laughs> but he writes down notes all the time, and, and he also meets with God quietly during his worship time, which I believe allows him to hear God at all times. So... But just so you know, it doesn't have to be the same way for you that it is for someone else. It doesn't have to be, there's not a set way. Like, oh, well, Pastor Rita hears from God this particular way, and so that's the way it's going to be for me. No, but it is a knowing in your spirit, in your inner being. Amen? And, uh, you know, I, I know that that a lot of times when, when you have a lack of peace, it's important to note but I also know that the enemy tries to attack people with anxiety 
to such a degree that it's hard uh, to get to a place of, of, of perfect peace. God has that place for you. So my point is, is that um, you can't go wrong by following the word and pressing in and asking God to reveal to you what direction to go. Uh, James 1, 5 says, you know, if you lack any kind of uh, direction, all you have to do is ask of the Father and he'll give it to you liberally without reproach. So just press into him and ask him to show you and guide you. And I promise you he will. He's a big enough God to be able to handle that request. So it's less important, it is less important how God speaks to us than what we do with what he says. God speaks most clearly to us in this day through his word. The more we learn it, the more ready we will be to recognize his voice when he speaks, and the more likely we are to obey what, he, what we hear. So there's just so much more I could teach you on hearing from God, but for just now, just know this, you can't go wrong doing what's right. You can't go wrong doing what's right. Amen. As powerful as God is, his presence so often shows up in the most gentle, loving fashion. Like he did with Elijah, he wants to meet you in your personal space. You know, he, Elijah was sequestered there in that cave and God said, come on out and let me show you, um, you know, out here in this area, in this space. And he said to, uh, he appeared to Elijah in a gentle whisper. A hidden treasure in the significance of God appearing to Elijah in a gentle whisper is that God met with him one-on-one. -on -one. Regardless of your situation, God cares. He is not too busy to meet with you. And he wants to meet with you one-on-one -on -one and help you with your most pressing situation. Don't worry. He's not coming with earthquakes, wild wind, and wild fire. He's coming with gentle compassion because he loves you and he cares for you. And he wants to meet you right where you are. His presence is only just a whisper away, and you can trust that he is powerful enough to make sure that you can hear him clearly. So you don't have to worry. God is a big God. He's big enough to make sure that you can hear him clearly. So really, basically, you can't mess this up too badly is what I'm saying. But it's important for you to ask God and to get God involved in your decision making, especially the big ones. And if you're in a situation to where you really need to, really need some serious direction, you can ask God to reveal to you the hearts of others so that you can make a qualified decision, especially when it's uh, in, in a situation where you're wanting to know if you should go forward in a relationship. Ask the Lord to reveal to you the heart of the other person, and God will show you if that is a good place for you or not. So you can trust him in that. God will reveal it to you. Amen. Well, I hope some of this may have helped you. Let's go ahead and pray. Father God, we just love you. We thank you, Lord, for your presence. Lord God, help us to know your voice like your word says, that your sheep know your voice and the voice of another they will not follow after. So, Father God, we know your voice and we will not follow after another. We thank you, Lord, for your help. We thank you, Lord, for your grace and your goodness, your leading and your guidance by the Holy Spirit. Lord, we desire to learn more about you, to follow you, to obey you. Please lead us and guide us and direct us and grow us, Lord God, in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, all right. Thanks for tuning in, and we will see you next time.